You know, we've been coming to this film festival now four or five years, and all of those years, except one, I think, when you were out of town or something, Don. Last had, year. We've had a something. chance to talk with you. It's yeah. good to see you. Nice to see you Can again. you believe seven years no, of Ironside? No, I really can't. No, it's, uh, we're all, uh, what's that great line Bob Hope uses? He says he can, uh, late at night on the late movies, he can flip the channels and watch his hairline recede. <laughs> I, it's, I can't believe it's gone on this long. You don't have it's any trouble with your hairline. <laughs> no, no, but uh, when, when we started the show, my youngest daughter was not yet born. And she's a big girl now, you know, she's up that high. So it is kind of funny. Yes. You did, uh, I, I talked with Raymond about this yesterday, about the Pope John special, mm -hmm. and uh, you were a part of that. Right. And uh, did it come as a surprise to you when Raymond asked you, or how did it, it evolve? Well, he has had plans for some time to do a, a major motion picture uh, about part of the life of Pope John XXIII. And then this project came up, which was to be a, a, and was a one-hour special. Um, so they, of course, wanted him to do the part. I don't know who else would do the part except Ray. And he said yes. And then he said to me about the part of Monsignor Ryan, he said, you have the part in my picture. I would also like for you to do it on the TV show. I said, I'd love to. So he and I went to Ireland and uh, met with the man whom I played, uh, Monsignor, now Bishop Ryan, in Lockray in County Galway. And that was an interesting experience for me, playing someone whom I know. Mm -hmm. Was he a man your age range? At, this, at the time that our TV show took place, he was three, four years younger than I am now. Mm -hmm. So roughly the same age. He's now, I guess, 55, something like that. What kinds of things did you ask him in order to prepare you for the part? Well, I asked him really only one question. Ray asked him uh, quite a bit about the script and uh, Ray knew Pope John so we were each playing someone you know we knew or had known. Uh, I really uh, tried to observe the man himself and he's a marvelous man and I asked him one question which was what was his feeling toward Pope John and his answer was absolute veneration uh, which I had to look up <laughs> but it means a feeling of respect mixed with awe. So I tried to kind of get that across in the show. I hope I, I managed to do so. Plus, I tried to use a couple of physical characteristics of, of Ryan. I hope I made it. Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, uh, there was a thing in the press that said on the set they were referring to Ray as Pope Raymond. And when I asked him about, <laughs> he did just what you did. I asked yeah. him, he just threw back his head and yeah. laughed. Pope Raymond. Yeah. Pope Ironside. <laughs> he can do all kinds of things with him. Yeah. Did but you see that show? I thought Ray was just great in it. I did not get to see it, but fortunately, oh, Ray tells me they will repeat it. Oh, it, it, I think for years to come. I just discovered it's had uh, apparently enormous, uh, pardon me, enormous, enormous international acclaim. It's being shown all over the world now. Ray, uh, there was one funny line that came out of that. Ray had a, a false nose built to, with which to play a part, in addition to all the other things he did to alter his physical appearance. And when we went back to shooting Ironside, uh, it was about three months after we'd done the Pope John thing, so we hadn't been working. And someone came on the set and said, oh, there's Ray. I didn't recognize him since he's got his nose job. And I love it because <laughs> we're not doing it. Get used to seeing him with that nose. It's funny. You know, I'm very, very fond of Raymond Burr, just, you know, getting to know him as a member of the press. And um, yet uh, I, I know that he is that very private person because I asked him in his um, audiences with Pope John what he talked about, and he said, uh, well, they were private, and so we talked about private things. Yeah. Do you, now, you've worked with him all these years. Is he still that private around you, Don? Or, or do you feel that you kind of know him better than than most people. I know him, yeah. What do you know about him? Oh, I know what kind of, of I know what kind of man he is. I know what kind of human being he is. And uh, he likes his privacy very much. I tell you what, when you get in his position, um, which is, uh, he is enormously popular throughout the entire world. And he has a great many demands made on him uh, by a, a great many people in the world. And uh, he, you know, no one's knocking that. It's it's nice to be acclaimed that way. It's nice to have people want to see you and everything. But there's only so much time in a man's life, and uh, he attempts to maintain his privacy, while still trying to do about a million things a week, which is what he does. Try. He's involved with everything. This past year, we, uh, he and I, were general co-chairman of the San Diego County Heart Association. That took a bit of our time, but he's always got, you know, a thousand projects going. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 
you know, I can be very dull about him. I can be dull about a lot of things. I, I, he's uh, as intelligent as anyone I've ever met, uh, if I'm any judge of intelligence. He's a great humanitarian. He's uh, very witty. He has an uncanny sense for the dramatic. He can look at a script and immediately know exactly what must be done to get the most value of it. And I just find him an extraordinary human being. I count myself privileged that I know him, and I know him very well. Yeah. You know, you have, uh, you say that you have three passions, your wife, your kids, and poker. So now I have to ask you, who are your poker playing Not buddies? necessarily in that order, my wife, my <laughs> oh, kids. Oh, it's, it's poker uh, first. <laughs> no, actually, it's, that's probably the order. Um, <laughs> poker playing buddies? Yeah, who are they? Well, let's see. Uh, a very good friend of mine is an actor named Jack Elam. Uh, oh, we yes, play all the time. Sure. Um, and some other actors, um, David Huddleston, we play with him. He's doing a new series for NBC this fall called Tenafly with Jim McEachum. And um, another actor named Dick Van Patten, uh, an actor named Dick Armbruster, uh, an actor named Jim Luisi, uh, I don't know. Who takes the money people. most of the time? Well, it kind of passes around. Uh, Mr. Elam probably winds up with most of it in the long run. But I can't, I don't know, I'm probably ahead lifetime. But the way things have been going the past six months, that's not going to stay that way very much longer. Bad yeah. run of cards. Oh, oh, bad. Well, let's hope your luck changes. Thank you. I hope so. Oh, God, I hope so, too. Yes. And, Don, thank you so much for visiting Bobby, with us. Bobby, it's very nice seeing you always. Thank you.